Early last year, before the release of Baldur's Gate 3, Wizards of the Coast revealed that they had canceled the development of at least five D&D video games, and they said that they did this in an effort to reallocate resources and refocus the brand. Now, we really had no idea what that meant for the future of D&D video games, but now, as of 2024, there are still a few of them that are confirmed to be in development, which is exactly what we're going to talk about in today's video. Let's start off with a recent statement from Hasbro's head of game studios. But as always, take what the suits say with a major a grain of salt, in this case, perhaps an apocalyptic size grain of salt. <laughs> but apparently Hasbro is claiming that they learned a few lessons from what Larian Studios did with Baldur's Gate 3. So Dan Ayub spoke to Games Radar last month and said that the success of BG3 shows three things. First, that a high quality D&D game, there's going to be an audience for that. Second, a successful video game can bring more players into the tabletop world. Finally, there's the importance of taking time to get it right. That's a game that Larian was very diligent, very adamant about. We're going to have a long dev cycle and take the time we need to get it right. So now that Hasbro is building its own internal game dev studios, Ayub says we're taking a similar approach with the internal titles. We've got to make sure the ones coming in now from our AAA studios hit home in a big way. It's certainly going to be interesting to see if Hasbro knows what it means to get it right. <laughs> this leads us to our first game on this list, which is an internal title, as it's being developed by Invoke Studios, a Montreal studio that's owned by Wizards of the Coast, so of course they have free reign to the D&D IP, as Wizards owns the D&D IP. This game is said to be a AAA game derived from the Dungeons & Dragons universe and developed on the Unreal Engine 5. Now do note that Invoke Studios is actually a rebrand of Took Games, and Took Games are the developers behind Dark Dungeon Dragons Dark Alliance, which came out in, was that 2019 or 2020, I think it was? Wizards of the Coast basically bought this company, restructured it, and I think they are allowing this company to grow quite a lot, because I remember a year or two ago, Wizards of the Coast vice president said something along the lines of, we're hoping to get this particular studio up to... 200 plus devs by the year 2025. Now that of course may have changed because that was a year or two ago that they said that, but yeah, the studio certainly grew or restructured, probably both. This project is certainly still in development though, even after that announcement of all of those cuts. And if you go to the Invoke website, we have very recent job postings for positions such as lead modeler, which was posted last month, and senior engineer programmers, which was posted last week. Unfortunately, we don't have much more information on this project. We don't really know Know what genre it's going to fall into we'll have to wait and see and i'll keep you guys updated up next is a game being developed by swedish developer starbreeze entertainment which is not owned by wizards of the coast so they had to acquire a license to work with the dungeons and dragons name starbreeze entertainment today announces that it has licensed the world's greatest role-playing game dungeons and dragons to be used in the upcoming project baxter game Starbreeze licenses the IP from Wizards of the Coast, the IP holder of Dungeons and Dragons, and a division of Hasbro. The upcoming game is planned to be released in 2026, with Starbreeze acting both as developer and publisher. So at least in some ways, this is kind of similar to Larian Studios with Baldur's Gate 3. They acquired the license, but they developed and published the game themselves. Now for the setting for this game, we don't know much except that it's set in the world of Dungeons and Dragons, which is straight from the Starbreeze website, but that is not specific to say the least. I don't even call D&D a world myself because D&D is more so a set of rules that typically takes place within various settings. For example, Baldur's Gate 3 is a Dungeons and Dragons game, but it's set in the Forgotten Realms setting on the world of Toril, on the planet of Toril. And don't forget, there's also several different planes of existence within Forgotten Realms lore and other lore too. So there's just so many possibilities for where this game could take place or the game that I talked about earlier. We just don't know yet. But let's take a look at the concept art. If you guys have any guesses as to where this picture takes place, please let me know down below in the comments. If I had to give it a quick guess, I would say that it almost gives a bit of a Baravia vibe, which is a town that was transported to the Shadowfell Plain, more specifically to the Domains of Dread, where you can find the vampire lord Strahd. So in the lore, Baravia is permanently overcast with storm clouds, which does line up with this pick, but that's pretty damn vague. There's probably a lot of places that are overcast with storm clouds, but uh, yeah, just, just a quick guess. But forget the setting, what type of game is this even going to? To be and we actually do have some information on this so the game with the internal code name project baxter set in the world of dungeon dragons will carry the signature starbreeze game cornerstones of cooperative multiplayer lifetime commitment through a games as service model community engagement and a larger than life experience 
Project Baxter will launch on all major platforms in 2026 and include crossplay. The game will be produced in Unreal Engine 5. Now, the reason why I was laughing a little bit right there is because some of you guys are probably already grabbing the chapter marker on the video and pulling ahead to the next game. And I totally understand that when you hear live service model, etc. Of course, it doesn't really get a lot of people too excited. And with that said, even though the majority of the time, it seems like any game that has a live service model turns out to be a very consumer unfriendly, unfriendly product, I don't think live service is inherently a bad thing. I think it's more so how a company chooses to implement this system into their game and whether they choose to be predatory or not, etc., which a lot of them unfortunately do. But as someone who does love single player or offline RPGs, I'm also excited to have like a multiplayer co-op crossplay type experience set in the Dungeon Dragons IP, that kind of makes me a little bit excited. So I'm, what I'm doing here is I'm staying very, 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 very cautiously optimistic. I don't want to be a negative Nancy with everything. I try not to be like that. You guys come to my channel. I don't want you always walking away pissed off. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to stay cautiously optimistic. But wait, we're not done yet. Shit. I think it's important that I point out here that Starbreeze Entertainment has been around for a while. So they're not noobs to creating games. But unfortunately... Their most recent game was Payday 3, which had a very, 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 very rough launch. <laughs> Payday 3 is a live service game. It has servers, etc., online, co-op, whatever, but it was plagued with really bad server issues. And if I remember correctly, don't quote me on this, I think it took them a couple months to put out the first big patch to make it much more playable, which is a long time. And as you guys can see on the Steam reviews here, we have mostly negative. Now, I'm not sure if these server issues overshadowed the core gameplay, like the conversation never really got around to the core gameplay because people couldn't play the game. But if you guys have played Payday 3, let me know down below. Like, is the is the, is the the game good? How's the live service model? I'm genuinely curious. But regardless, Starbreeze Entertainment is working on Project Baxter, and they seem to be really excited about having the D&D IP, and Wizards of the Coast seems to be really excited about having them. So they must have some plan for success with this next game. Hopefully they learn their lesson from Payday. Moving on to the next D&D project, and it's a bit confusing as to what's going on here, and this is a AAA D&D game being described as a AAA third-person open-world fantasy RPG. Unfortunately, in February of this year, 2024, the CEO of Hidden Path Entertainment, which is the studio behind this game, put out a post on LinkedIn that says this. For over six months, our team has been in numerous active discussions to find replacement funding for an exciting RPG project. We now have no choice but to pause development on that project and reduce the company's size until we have an opportunity to return to it. Now, the only reason why I'm including it in this video is because the game is not technically fully canceled yet. The studio did experience some layoffs like many other studios this past year and this year, 44 layoffs to be exact, and things are certainly not looking great, but until it's officially canceled, I'll continue to keep an eye out for any updates. And the final game on this list is from the developer that made Disney's Dreamlight Valley Gameloft, and they are apparently making a survival life sim action RPG hybrid game based on Dungeon Dragons. Let's head over to the Gameloft website and see what these guys are all about. Gameloft has always been pushing the frontiers of mobile game... Off to a good start with this one. With that said, Gameloft did announce the game like this. Gameloft announced today that it has licensed the world's greatest role-playing game, Dungeons & Dragons, from Wizards of the Coast, to publish a new PC and console game developed by its Montreal studio, creators of Disney, Dreamlight Valley, Lego Star Wars, Castaways, and several games within the iconic Dungeon Hunter series. So they didn't announce this game for mobile but just because it's not on mobile, of course, doesn't mean that it's going to be a good game. And also, actually, Disney Dreamlight Valley didn't launch on mobile, but it came to mobile at a later date. Now, setting aside, I would say the very high probability of a stupid, stupid cash shop coming with this game, the idea of a survival, sandboxy, crafting, action, RPG, mixture type game for a game set in the D&D IP and maybe one of the Forgotten Realms settings or something like that. That's actually really exciting to me because most of the D&D games that I've played, they're very story centric, which is amazing. And I still want plenty of those games to come in the future, but you usually just progress the story and then the game's over. I think it'd be really cool to be able to just kind of live, feel like you're living in a D&D setting 
especially the Forgotten Realms. I think our best bet though at speculating on what this game will be like is to take a look at Disney's Dreamlight Valley, which actually has very positive reviews over on Steam, which is nice to see. The game is very Animal Crossing-like. You start on an island, find tools, gather craft, you know, live in your town and house. But there is also a main story to it, which you do eventually need to progress to unlock certain areas and crafting options. But guess what? It, of course, does have a cash shop. Most people seem to say it's not pay to win, but everyone has different definitions on what that even means these days. I'm definitely having a much harder time staying optimistic about this one compared to Project Baxter. So yeah, that's going to be it for this video. I would assume there's more D&D games also in development that we just don't know about right now because Hasbro did say they had more than one internal studio that they're developing for these games. And the only internal studio on that list was the first game that we talked about. So there's probably more. And I'll keep an eye on as many of them as I possibly can because I do have a special interest in, of course, RPGs, but D&D &D RPGs because of BG3 and its success on this channel. I'll keep you guys updated on all this. Let me know what you think down below. I'll catch you on the next one.